Hello, everybody out there in YouTube land. Um, I am going to have to be kind of quiet because uh, my roommate's asleep. It's like four in the morning. Um, but I had a really uh, kind of good thought for an expatriate video, so I thought I would, uh, I thought I'd get it down uh, now. <clears throat> and that is this idea that once you've been an expatriate and you've taught ESL in another country or what have you, that you're entitled to do the same when you come home. So, so yeah, this is kind of about an expatriate sense of entitlement. <laughs> and I'm just going to go ahead and put it out there right now. I've learned the hard way that that idea is essentially bullshit because, um, well, let's take China, for example. You run off to China, you teach English for three to four years, and you're kind of a big shot there, right? A lot of people have fake respect for you. You, uh, can drink as much as you want, whenever you want. You can buy some expensive shit here and there, and what have you. Uh, you go to clubs, you meet women, you know, you fuck a lot of women, or a lot of dudes if, you know, you're into that, or you're female. Actually, most of the Western females I ran into in China were gay. Um, no offense to any of them, it was just an observation. Um, And, and then you sort of get used to that. And then after, say, four years, one of two things is going to happen. No more sun tea. One of two things is going to happen. You are either going to kind of get tired of the whole thing and decide you want to come home or you're going to become a lifer. So if you're a lifer, this video is not going to be useful for you and you may as well move on and, you know, maybe keep your comments to yourself because this isn't, again, for your crowd. Now, for those of you that are going to come home, what you're going to find is that essentially what you did was take a break. Now, I just want to make it clear, I don't have a degree in anything. I was very close to one, but it was going to be an associate's degree. So officially, I don't have a degree in anything. I went over to China. They pretty much lied about everything at the office there. I got asked a bunch of awkward questions I didn't know the answers to. All right? So, that three or four years experience that you had teaching in China, again, was a break. <laughs> you, got to, you got to see what teaching was like for a few years, which is sometimes as long as people teach anyway. There are a lot of teachers that don't make it past four or five years. Ten years, you know, would be a, a good amount of time to teach, probably, in the States, at least, or Europe, or what have you. It's a difficult job, as I'm sure some of you expats have found out. Just imagine when the students speak English and might have a gun. Um, so, you'll, you'll find pretty quickly that your expat teaching experience is, you know, pretty much means not here. I put it down on my apps as work history, so, so it kind of can, sometimes it can get you in the door. Uh, but, but, you know, uh, as, as far as, like, being useful here to, to, because, um, let's say you do find, uh, uh, an ESL position, right? Uh, all the people that have degrees in education or English are going to get that job before you, and, 
you might get some private work if you're cheap. You could always do that, and, and I recommend it. But if you're looking to like get a job like a nine to five teaching ESL, and you don't have a degree, and all you have is your China experience, good luck with that. I mean, I'm sure some people have done it, but I applied for every uh, every uh, ESL position at every college I could get to in this area, and nothing. All right. It's not like they can really contact your references. So, if coming home is what you really want to do, you need to get rid of that big shot attitude. That's something that you leave in China because, again, you're going to come home and you're going to be, you know, right back where you were, uh, perhaps, or back where you were, but you're going to have a slightly different attitude, you know, more mature attitude about things. So that might get you by a little bit better uh, than before. But you have to be, you, you have to accept being in, again, a fairly similar situation. Um, so, so yeah, you know, you, 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 you need to, uh, again, uh, just be satisfied and, and I've kind of broached this topic already you know in a few videos here and there but you know what you really need to do is is just just accept that you're a regular person when you come back here and decide from the novelty of living and working in China for a few years, it's just that. It's a novelty. You can't expect it to be worth anything to anyone. I know it's probably hard for some of you expats to hear that, that are thinking of coming home, but you, you, you'd better have a plan and, and you'd better be able to do something other than teaching. Now, guys, all the jobs that pay well, and I'm talking like nine to ten dollars an hour starting, those are all jobs that you're going to be using your muscles for. And you know what? That's that's a that's not a bad thing, because you know, four or five years of teaching can get a little bit old. It really can. So. You would be a lot better off, you know, just just getting some research done, contacting some friends, you know, finding out what's available, where you think you're going to go, and, and start seeing what you might want to do, and, and start lining those things up. Don't be like, oh man, I'm going to go back home, you know, this experience will get me a job, no problem. Nah, man. <laughs> Don't. Don't have that attitude in your head or you're, you're going to be in like some trouble. Now, maybe some of you went to university in China. Well, who do you think is going to get the job first? The guy with the Chinese uh, English degree or, or the guy with the English degree from, I don't know, UNT? <laughs> Probably the guy from UNT, I hate to say it. But, I mean, really, this, this shouldn't be very surprising to anyone. I found, I found it very difficult to accept when I got home, you know? It was very weird to be like, well, I, but, you know, I went and did this thing, you know, it should matter. Now, like I said before, if you're willing to... Uh, you know, be a tutor, uh, that might get you some places. You can put yourself out on Craigslist, you know, offer tutoring in various subjects, uh, and, 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 and such, and, and maybe you can get somewhere there. But, uh, you know, as far as, as like getting a 
nine to five like doing this. There are very few without a degree, without a degree from here. There are very, very few people who, who I know who've been able to do that. And, and again, that's going to be a situation where you either accept that you can come home and do something else or maybe even want to do something else. Or you stay over where you are forever because you can't do anything else. You won't accept doing anything else. Um, you know, but if you want to come home and you want to make 9 to $10 an hour, uh, warehouse work, uh, landscaping, uh, you know, walking people's dogs, uh, you know, setting up guitars, which, which I've done some. I set up a guitar, it takes me a, a, about an hour, and I charge anywhere from $25 to $35 for that, which is cheap for a guitar setup. You know, so, uh, uh, you know, really, really don't get, don't have a big ego about the thing. Just get it, get it set in your head that, that, you know, it was a good experience, it was a good break from things. Uh, but now, you know, when you go over there, your, your, your life where you were before pauses. And then at some point, you know, it's time to take that life up again. And, and you know, maybe put it back together if it's in bad shape or what have you. Anyway, uh, I, I just really wanted to give you guys some general advice there. Uh, I don't think that I need to... Uh, do a part B on this one. Uh, you can get a few other details on this from my last few videos, so of course feel free to, to watch those and such. Um, I need to get to sleep, so uh, I'm going to cut this one even a little bit short. Uh, go on and signing off. Have a good night.